Welcome to Tracking Engagement Page Elements. In this lesson, we're going to cover how you can actually track various sections of your pages showing up in the browser itself. For example, maybe you want to track when a certain FAQ section pops up or even when certain cart errors appear. You'll see exactly how to do that and more. Let's take a look. All right, let's continue tracking engagement with page elements. The lesson objectives for today is to get beyond scroll, and we're going to do that with the element visibility trigger. It's a whole new trigger we have yet to play with, and we're going to give you a couple of use cases for this. Uh, one is in regards to form submissions, especially those hard to track form submissions, and I'll show you what I mean. And then we've got error reports where you can actually use this for automated error reporting, some pretty cool stuff. Now we have just covered advanced video tracking, which brings us to lesson number three, page elements. Coming up, we're going to go into enhanced e-commerce, which is the next level of e-commerce. Then we'll talk about custom dimensions and metrics, user ID tracking, and as we continue the deep dive at that point, we'll move into table variables in Google Tag Manager. But for now, it's all about the page elements. Of course, scroll is great, and we've covered scroll in the GTM course in our basics course here at CXL Institute, but sometimes the scroll triggers, they just aren't enough, right? Sometimes it's just too generic, and you want to get something a little bit more specific. You need a little bit more of a, a specific signal before you fire off some sort of measurement. One of those may be hard to track form submissions, and I'm going to show you one of those coming up here in just a moment. The other one, automated error reports. Like This is another use case that you can use for this. So we're actually going to show you both of those, and I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. We're going to go into Tag Manager. We've got our preview mode pulled up, and I'm going to show you the use case first. Let's go into our post here of Hello World, and we have a very popular plugin that's been set up for our form. So we would just go through, we want to track a form submission, right? That's uh, a super useful thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set on, in fact, I'm going to keep preview up so you can see exactly what's going on. So here we have our sort of basic at this point, basic stuff. And I want to set up a form submission. Now, if I come down here, and I click on send, watch what happens. Uh, form submit just fired. Now, if I use a form submit trigger, which we covered in the basics uh, course, you have a problem because a this form submit literally every time i click on this it's trying to click a form submit but it's really not a form submit right so that's not that's actually not what happened in fact i have all these errors that popped up so i've got you know an error here i've got two errors here so that's kind of a challenge what i want to do is i want to track when they go to the next page so i can't really use a form submit in this case at least not the built-in version so let's try it the other way let's try it where they go to the the next page uh, and I could track the form submit there. So I might do that by saying, okay, let's do test. Let's do test at test.com. Uh, this is, of course, a test. And why not? Let's just pass on that the fact it's a test. Now, if we click on send, what's going to happen is I'm going to go to the next page. But wait, I don't go to a next page. I get a form submit, which is great. But I don't get anything else that, that I can use as a signal that says, hey, you're on the next page and it's officially happened. So all these form submits kind of just look the same. And that's exactly what I do. I look at variables and, and see at this form submit, was there anything that was unique to the fact that, uh, yes, this actually worked? And at this point, there's really not. It tells me the form and the form class, but that's all the same across the board. All these form submits are the same. I don't see anything that says success or not. So I can't really, as a measurement marketer, I'm not able to go through and figure out how to adjust that. Um, so in this case, what I need to do, if I'm trying to measure this, I need to figure out another way. And we're going to use something called element visibility. So now what I'm going to use in this particular case with this particular form, I'm going to use the fact of when this particular element shows up in the browser. So that's going to be my trigger. And then we can send an event to Google Analytics that says everything's honky dory and totally working fine. So let's do that. We're going to go through here. I'm going to go to inspect. And what I'm looking at is as I scroll up and down here, and you've seen me do this before in earlier lessons uh, where we were talking about some of the, the video tracking. If I scroll around, you can see kind of where where uh, the element itself is. It highlights it over in the left-hand side, right? So as I scroll up and down, you see the element. Well, I'm looking at this particular element. Uh, and of course, I can, I can dive down. I'm going to keep this very, very high level. But what I want is I want this particular thing. When this thing reveals itself, and only when this thing reveals itself, do I actually want there to be uh, the, the trigger, the actual thing to fire in Google Tag Manager. So again, you just hover over the element that you want, you hit inspect, and it sort of just takes you to it, right? So you can see that it's right there. 
So that's what I want. I want this element to fire. How do I do that? Glad you asked. We're going to go to Tag Manager because Tag Manager has a built-in trigger that is just for this. So we're going to go to New Triggers. This is going to be a new one. And we're going to come down to where it says Element Visibility. So we're going to click on Element Visibility. Now, the very first thing you do is you determine which method do you want. Do you want to use the ID of whatever the attribute is, or do you want to use the CSS selector? The CSS selector, in most cases, is actually kind of the easiest one, I think, to use. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to show you that. But just know that you can use the ID as well. So I'm going to come to uh, CSS selector. And what I'm going to do is we need to figure out what that is. Now, I'm going to show you this. This is uh, something we'll give you in the, the resources as well. This is something to be familiar with, especially if you don't have any experience with CSS. This is one of those things that you will eventually get better at the more that you use Tag Manager if you're not doing this. Um, but you see these little selectors, you know, the dot class is, uh, you know, the dot intro is, is to look for the CSS class of intro. The hashtag first name would be looking for the ID of first name, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I have all these different selectors. And I can go in and I can sort of manually figure this stuff out. However, there is a reason I used the right click and then inspect because when I do that, I come right to here. When you right click on this, you can go to uh, copy. And when you go down here, you go to copy selector. Now, what I do is I come back in here and I just paste it in. And now you can see this is the actual selector where it looks for this particular ID. And then it, and it goes uh, very specifically. All of this drills down to just this particular element on this particular form. That's kind of what we're looking for, which is great. That's what I'm looking for. So. I'm just going to copy that in. Just know again that you can go through and, and sort of get into the details of it. This is not a CSS lesson, so we're not going to dive into those details of selectors. I just showed you sort of a quick and dirty way of doing it. Again, just find your, your uh, inspect element, go in, go to copy, go to copy selector, and then you just paste it right in. Uh, then I have a choice of, okay, is it once per page, meaning once per whenever the page page view event occurs in Google Tag Manager for every time that, that script loads in Google Tag Manager's container script. Is it once per element? So every time the particular element shows up, or is it every single time that the element shows up that I wanted to do it? So in this case, I'm going to say once per page, which is perfectly fine for what we want to do. Um, and then you also have additional things like the amount that it's visible. In this case, I'm going to say 50%, uh, but I could also change it to 100% um, to kind of make sure that the element is 100% visible in the, in the viewer of the browser. And this is the view window. So this is actually making sure that this element is 100% viewable in the browser window. Like that's kind of a cool thing that you can play with here. Then, and this is very important, I can set the minimum on-screen duration. So I can say, oh, it must be on there for at least three seconds, right? So 3,000 seconds is th uh, 3,000 milliseconds is three seconds. Uh, or, and in this case, and or, I can actually do observe DOM changes. Now, what this means is once that page loads, just sort of keep a listener out there for other changes. And in this case, that's exactly what I want. Because if you recall, if I just refresh this, this element wasn't there until actually I submitted the form and it was successful, then the element popped up which means the DOM changed. And so I'm gonna tell Tag Manager, just sort of observe the DOM changes. And I'm gonna have this, uh, in this particular case, work on every uh, single visibility element that pops up that matches this selector. Uh, but of course, know that you could say, only do it on certain pages uh, or any other ways that we've broken down these things before, right? So I can switch it and say, only on these certain pages should you do these things. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna have it do it any, every single time, just for sake of example. Then I'm gonna save it. And we're going to save this as an element of visibility trigger. This particular one is uh, with our contact form submitted. Actually, let's just say contact form successfully submitted. Okay, so now we've got our successfully submitted contact form. Oops, let's get that spelled correctly here. There we go. Now, I'm going to save that. And we're going to go ahead and preview it. So I'm going to refresh my preview. And then I'm going to refresh this side of the page. And here I don't really need this anymore. But what I'm looking for is an element visibility trigger to show up now when I have a successful send. So of course I'm going to TBV it. So I'm just going to click on form submit. Okay, yeah, that's not really working. That's that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do a test. Uh, let's see, test, test at test.com. Let's test again, test again in our message. And then we go to send. And look what happens right in there. When that send happens, element visibility trigger pops up. How cool is that? So now my element visibility trigger popped up. Why? Because this element popped up. Now, what do I do with that? This is where I can go into, now that I know the trigger's working, I can go create a tag. And I can say, well, let's go in. We're going to create a universal analytics event tag. Uh, maybe this one I want to call engagement. Actually, let's call this leads. You know what? Let's do better. I'm going to say contact form. 
And then I'm going to say this one was a successful contact form. And I want to know what page URL it was on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do even better. I'm going to say I want page URL first. So contact form for the page URL. So I'm going to put in a little variable there. And this is just kind of going to give me a report of how many new leads I'm getting or how many errors I'm getting. And I'm going to say this is success. Okay, so this one's going to fire upon success. I'm going to tell it go to our analytics variable, our analytics account. We're going to say use the trigger. Which trigger? Our EV trigger, our element visibility for successfully submitted. Then I'm going to go ahead and save it. We'll do a little hierarchy here. So GA event and then contact form. This is success. All right, so we'll click on save. And now we'll refresh this and I'm going to refresh this again. Do the same thing. We'll do test, test at test.com, test, test one more time. We'll go ahead and submit it. Now, Element Visibility has fired our event saying we've got a success. How do I know that for a fact? I can go into analytics and I should see with any luck is our event firing. There it is, contact form. There's our event action. This is our page. So I can see on our page, we had a success. Great, that's perfect. But what if I have an error? Right? What if I have an error? What if I click on send and like I see this and I want to I want to know well how many times are people clicking on send and, and just not submitting something? Maybe I want to measure that. Maybe I want to measure whenever these are popping up. Right? I could do that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come through here and let's do that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to inspect. So there is my uh, field required. So let's just get in there. See that right there. So I'm going to right click. We're going to copy. I'm going to go to selector and we're going to set up a brand new trigger. So this one's going to be another element visibility trigger. And I'm going to go to CSS selector, paste that in. Uh, I'm going to say once per, let's see, every time the element appears on the screen. Let's do that. Uh, and it's 50% is fine, but I can make it 100%. doesn't really matter. And I want to observe DOM changes again because this is once the, basically think about this as once the page is loaded, if there's any other changes that happen on the page, I need you to pay attention to it. So that's what we're doing. So the page is technically loaded. And then these are changes that happen to the page after the fact. So um, that's what we're doing with the observe DOM changes. And we'll go ahead and save that. This is going to be element visibility. This is, uh, in this case, a contact form error. And we're we'll gonna click on save. And now I'm gonna to go to tags and I'm gonna set up the tag. So we're gonna say, uh, let's see, we had our contact form success. I'm just gonna copy that this time. Again, going a little bit quickly because at this point we're all kind of got the basics down. So we're gonna copy this. This is gonna be a contact form error. And we're gonna say this is error. So now instead of reporting success, it's gonna report an error. And now I'm going to take out this trigger. Oops, we're going to edit this trigger, take it out. And I'm going to instead use my error trigger that I just created, a little EV, and this is the contact form error. So I'm going to save that. Perfect. Now we're going to go through and refresh it, and we're going to TBV it, which is, okay, we probably screwed something up. Let's just make sure. So let's find out. So I'm going to come in. I just reload the form. I'm going to close this out because I don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a false positive. We're going to send, see what happens. Do we have any errors reporting? I don't see any errors reporting. Oh, no, I take that back. There we do. The reason why is because it was in not in the browser window. That's why it didn't show up. Uh, so I've got my, ele my element visibility. There's my error because that's when these uh, popped up. I'm going to show you that again uh, just because of what happened here. So my window, my browser window is this area right here. And element visibility is all about having that thing that you're you're trying to measure in the window, in the active window. That's what makes this trigger so cool because it's literally in the browser window, not on the page, not that not it's below the fold or anything like that, but it's in the viewable window port. So in this case, this is the viewable window port. So if I come here, I'm going to have to pull this down a little bit because what I want to do is these errors, when I scrolled up to the top and I hit send, these errors, watch, in fact, I'm just going to do it again so you can see it. Uh, when I click on send. So yeah, the errors that I was looking for that I set up at the top, totally fired, but they're not viewable. So watch what happens when I scroll down. As soon as they become viewable, this particular one that I did here, this is it, right? I just did this right click inspect, element visibility, pop that up. Now I could set up another one for this one. I could set up another one for this one. But at this point, that's what popped the error form. If I come down here, I'm just going to reload that again. This time I'm gonna drag this down and I'm just gonna click on send here so the error automatically pops up in the browser. See that you will see the element visibility popped up and fired my error. Now, 
What if I go, okay, well, that's not really useful because maybe they're above the fold or whatever. I, I want to use this one instead. What do I do? Again, right-click, inspect. Maybe I want to use this as the error, so I'm just going to copy and then copy selector. Go in the Tag Manager. I'm going to go to Triggers, and I'm going to change the trigger. So instead of this selector, I'm going to say it is now this selector. I'm going to click on Save. I'm going to refresh. Come back here. And now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to refresh, close this out since we won't need it. Now, even though these are up here, I'm looking for that bottom error to occur. So I'm going to go ahead and send. There it is. So it popped because this popped right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a test. And this, this showed me my error event. So now I'm going to do a test. Test at test.com. Another test. And just for kicks, one more test. Click on send. Now my element visibility popped up again, this time with success. So if I click on this one here, because right now this is I'm looking at this one down here, so number 12. Now if I look at 21, success just happened. And if I go to analytics, I can start seeing, here's my page, here's the errors, here's the successes that are coming through. So I, it's really, really, really cool what we can do. The other thing that we can do is with order forms. This is just with contact forms, but also think about your order forms. And you can automate this. Again, we're going to keep this kind of high level, um, but know that the better you get at CSS selectors, you can sort of say, hey, whenever any of those generic errors occurs, or if I look at the variables at this point in time, I can see what the text was. So it says, thank you for your message has been sent. So I can, I can also pass that through if I wanted as a variable because I have access to it. Um, so there's some stuff I have there. Also, if I go back to our form, form. Uh, let's just see here. I believe I have a little sales page test. We'll do this. We click here. We go to the form. So on our form itself, right, if I come into the form and I want to see uh, a particular action, like in this case, I want to see when they're clicking on pay with credit card. Well, I could click here and uh, when this particular thing happens, all of this reveals itself. Okay. When I click on this, all of this reveals itself. I could do the same thing. How? I can come in here. I can inspect. And I can go and say, okay, I want to take this. And when this appears, so we're going to go to copy. And I'm going to go to selector. We're going to copy this. I'm just going, in this case, I'm going to show you, we're going to copy the trigger. Because I want everything except for um, the selector. So I'm just going to copy the trigger here. And we're going to say, in this case, it's a order form reveal. So I'm going to do that. We're going to paste in our selector that we just copied over. Every time the element appears on the screen, uh, everything else is fine. We're going to click on save. So now I've got order form reveal. Uh, and for now, I'm not going to set up a, a, actually, I will set up a Google Analytics event. Why not? Just for kicks. So uh, I'll go into our tags. Again, I'm going to say uh, our contact form success. I'm just going to copy that. It's got most of what we need in there. So we're going to change this now. So it's a GA event. This is an order form. In this case, a reveal. And then uh, I'm going to click down here. This is events. This is order form. And then I'm going to put it on the page that it was. In this case, we'll just say reveal. And I'm going to remove this trigger because you don't want to use successfully submitted as the trigger. Instead, I want to use our new order form reveal trigger that we just created. So we click on save and now refresh. And then we're gonna go back and we're going to go ahead and go back to our order form, take a look at that. And I'll show you, we don't need this anymore. Click on the order monthly. Okay, and now we're, we should watch down here for our reveal. So when we reveal, we're gonna click and there's our reveal, there's our element of visibility, and that's where it fired our event for order form reveal. And of course, at that point in Google Analytics, what we should see here, click these off, we should see now order form. There's our order forms that are actually showing up with our IDs and the order form itself was a reveal. So I've got those firing as well. So how cool is that, right? So we've got all these nice little uh, reveals that are happening. We've got all these hard to track things that otherwise would be very, very difficult to figure out. But because of our element visibility trigger, we can actually track. Now, again, the cool thing about this is it's when it's visible in the browser window. You even saw how we set it up kind of correctly, but because it was outside of the window, it didn't fire. And then when they scro when we scrolled it into the window port, it actually fired in the viewer port. So this is how specific these get. Now, 
the the tricky part of this, I would, you know, quick and dirty, I think is fine to get started. It's like with all things with Google Tag Manager, get good enough to get going and use this tool because that's what's motivating is when you start using the tool and you see what it can do, then you come back and make it better. Are there other ways that I would sit here and actually do these selectors so that I can sort of filter out some actions and bring in some other actions? Probably there is. Um, but that's where you go through something like this and you start really digging down and learning CSS and how to use selectors um, because it is something you will want to get better at. However, that said, this is good enough to get going. You can see how quickly you can get something up and running and get visibility, pardon the pun, get visibility into something from a measurement perspective that you did not otherwise have. This element visibility trigger is one of your best possible tools in Google Tag Manager. It makes things a lot easier uh, to measure. And again, it's, it's things like uh, if I came back here and wanted to see for example, and I won't set this up, but now at this point, you know, what if I have, I have long posts and I want to see when the comments actually come into view. So I can do that. I can come in, I can right click and say, okay, when you see a comment come into the view, that's, there's my selector. When you see this actually show up in the view report, then fire that they saw the comments. When they see the share buttons, right click, inspect. When they see the share button, go ahead and fire and tell me that the share buttons were shown. So you can see all of these different things uh, that you can now measure that you really couldn't before. It was a lot more difficult anyway to do that before, but now that you know the element of visibility trigger, it's a whole new world. So again, automated error reports that you can pop up and fire, you know, when only error elements show up on your order forms or your form submissions. Uh, and of course, the fact that we can uh, do the hard to track form submissions because not all forms go to the next page. And that's kind of a challenge unless you know how to now use this tool, which of course you do. All right, here's what's been covered. We have gone way beyond scroll, talking about the element visibility trigger and the use cases for that, including form submissions. This is particularly the Ajax type stuff that uh, like we saw here, where it just sort of refreshes the form and says, great, it's been submitted, uh, but there's no other way to track it except for that visibility uh, element. So now you have that and error reports where like the form isn't quite filled out and we don't have to use the form submission triggers anymore because we can use element visibility uh, to really dial in some things, including how the order forms work. Like you can see that, like how interesting would that be to know uh, where people are falling off on, on different parts of your page. So element visibility is something you definitely want to be able to play around with. Now, lesson resources, we've got Google's guide to the element visibility trigger. We have, of course, that CSS selector reference. That's the one that I personally use uh, just because it's a really easy reference to kind of go through. And again, don't worry if you don't quite get all this stuff initially. That's not important. It's not important that you are an expert before you start using this tool. It's important that you get good enough to get going, go as far as you can, get something useful out of it, then you come back and make it even better. And that's how this works. This tool evolves with you as your skills evolve. Uh, of course, check out Simo's guide to the element visibility trigger. This is how you start learning some more about IDs versus selectors and the different types of selectors is by studying the masters, studying other people. In this case, like Simo, we're going to refer to him a lot. Uh, he teaches our uh, CXL Institute advanced Google Tag Manager course. Uh, he's a fantastic fantastic resource to follow if you are not already. Uh, so this is our first reference to, to his blog, but you'll see many, many more. Uh, but again, check out his element visibility trigger guide because it helps you to improve your technical skills as you are improving your Google Tag Manager skills. Your next steps, guess what? It's all about practice. Start with something easy. Hopefully you know that's a pattern at this point. Get good enough to get going, then come back and make it better. Just go in, find the element that you want to be able to track, set up the trigger. You don't technically have to set up a tag. Remember, in the very beginning of this lesson, that's exactly what we did, is we set up this trigger and we verified it was working, right? We TBV'd it, we verified it was working first, then we actually added the tag to it. You can do the same thing. You can just set up a trigger, you can see how the trigger works based on your different definitions of of how you set up the ID or the CSS selector or the uh, percentage visible, or if it's, uh, you know, every time that comes into the, with a browser or the element or once per page, and you can play with all those different settings while it's just a trigger without actually firing any tags. It's a great way to practice and play around with this and get comfortable with using things like CSS selectors. And of course, once we've got those done, we are ready to move on. There you have it, tracking engagement page elements. So now you know exactly how you can track various elements as they appear in the browser and how you can use that information to improve your own reporting in the various platforms that you're using. Once you're ready, let's move on with tracking e-commerce, the next level.